Good evening, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us via our last Facebook Live. Please take the time, please take the opportunity to go ahead and share the live, share with your friends, share with your family members, share with those that you know need to be encouraged, share it on the various Facebook groups that you are a part of. But all that I want you to do is get the word out. Share, 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 share the live. I'm actually looking for my settings because I don't like how my camera is giving me all this feedback, but looks like we're going to just have to go with it tonight because I can't adjust it. Thank you all so much. As you are coming in, speak to me. Say hello. Let me know that you are watching with us, that you are on with us, that you are tuning in, that you've been encouraged this month. It has been absolutely phenomenal all month long. I am, we're closing it out tonight. Uh, 21 words of impact, 21 days uh, that have been meant. Hey, little sister Ayana. <laughs> um, hey, Kish. 21 days that have been meant to inspire you, to impact you, to empower, motivate, and encourage you to get back out there and to get going after the things that um, you purpose in your heart to do. But even as such, those things that God has purposed for you to do. Hello, big sister, Pastor Lisa Mackey. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm excited tonight. I have got someone special on the line with me. You all know I have been excited all month long. I promise you that every speaker that I've shared with you on this month, every one of them is a friend of mine. But more than that, they have been handpicked by God. As I endeavored to bring you this month, I asked the Lord, who should I share? Who should I bring on uh, to share with your people or to share with the people so that they can be motivated? Who will have something impactful to say? And so nonetheless, I've been excited all month by every speaker. Every speaker has been encouraging, has been life changing. And tonight will be no less. I'm excited about it. And I know that it's going to be that way. Hello, Tashana. She is a pastor. She is a mom. She is a wife. She is a businesswoman, and most important to me, she is my soror. I'm excited to have on the line. Hey, Soror Tanya, how are you? I am excited to share this platform tonight with my soror, none other than Miss Tanya Williams. Hey. Oh, I forgot to say you're an author. She is an author as well, y'all. <laughs> I get all excited and caught up and forget. But she is an uh, author as well. So again, she is a power player. I'm excited. She's a gold getter. She's not a gold digger. Nope. She is a <laughs> gold getter. <laughs> Hello, Sora Shaniqua. How are you? Oh, Thanks, you all. Hello, Diane. Hello, hello. <laughs> Tanya, Soror, pastor, author. What else should I call you? Mom, not, wife. Not, I don't like the titles. <laughs> I don't like the titles. I don't like me either. Can I just simply be Nancy? I'm all right. Right. So we, we can't live up to them anyway. So yep. listen, and we get caught up in them too, don't we? Right. Just call me Tanya. <laughs> I to that. Okay, Tanya. Okay. Good. Good. So listen. Talk to us about. You know, I did the best I could to to introduce you. Tell tell the world who is Tanya Williams. Who is Tanya? Well, like you said, I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a life coach. Um, I still work full time. I'm an author. I'm a co-author. Um, you know, ministry really is my passion. And so anything ministry related, that's really who I've become. Um, I love helping people. I love women to, you know, find what their purpose is and walk in it. Um, I love to help women come out of bondage that they've been in. I feel like so many times the church will talk about certain issues, um, but the women sitting in the pews, they don't hit the issues that they're in bondage to. And so that's one reason why I wrote my book is to help them with some of those issues that I was in bondage with. So I'm actually writing a, a um, workbook now to go with it to launch nice. a small group, because if it had not been for a small group, um, I would not even have known I was in bondage and I would have not known who I was or been able to walk in my calling. So I think it's very important for us to discuss those issues that women go through so they can find out not only who they are, but whose they are. That is so powerful. I'm excited. I'm guilty. I've got to get a copy of the book. 
And now it looks like I'm going to have to get a copy of the workbook and then within our group have a study on it. I have a book discussion on it. That sounds awesome. How soon will your workbook be out and be available? Um, I have two more chapters to write. Okay. So, um, we're actually going to do a small group pilot in August. Um, one of the ladies that I used to lead small groups with had just said that, you know, God put it on her heart and she wanted to ask if, if I would let her do it. And I was like, well, yeah. And then she was like, well, you help lead it. And I was like, well, okay. Well, from that spiral down the workbook and nice. I to pray about it. You know, in the beginning, I thought about doing the workbook and then I was just like, you know how we do. We're just like, eh, nah. yeah. <laughs> as I prayed about it, it was like, God was like, this is the time to do the workbook. And so he just started downloading all this stuff. And I, it was like six chapters in two days of how, how um, to do the workbook. And so that's my goal to have it out by August. Awesome. Awesome. Well, keep us posted because we'll definitely want to jump in and jump on top of that. Tanya, COVID, Corona, whatever you want to call it, COVID-19 or Corona has affected the world. I want us to continue along with the conversation that's already been started and that we've been having all month. Um, how did COVID-19 affect you, your business and or your family? What effects did it have on you all? Um honestly got to say it was positive for me. Um, it had more of a negative impact for my husband because he is an entertainer. So those shows and things like that, they got shut down. But, um, you know, it did bring us closer together. It gave us a time to kind of just kind of decompress and just rest, which we needed tremendously because it's yes. just like, go, go, go. But for me, God still provided. Luckily, I was able to work from home. But during that time, that's where my book was birthed. You know, wow. um, I started in March. I think I was done by June or July. And that was like a month break in between when I just could not write anymore. You know, I just had writer's block. And so it was really good for me. I did a lot of life coaching during that time, believe it or not. And <laughs> yeah, um, actually, it was one of my busiest times, to be honest, because everything was going online as far as conferences and things like that. So I stayed pretty busy. I was definitely blessed. That is awesome. And then so many people needed someone to talk to. They needed an yeah. outlet. So definitely uh, coaching, life coaching, business coaching, um, Christian coaching, marriage coaching, all of that stuff was really you know, on the rise again, because it was a new life for us all. And we had to figure out how to navigate through it. And we definitely all needed a little therapy, we had to figure some things out. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. And you and I have got to get together and figure out this whole family tree thing. I heard you talking about yes. your husband, who yes. is, listen, you all, I found out or I discovered via Facebook by one of Tanya's posts, I think it was Tanya's post, or it was one of my other cousin's posts, that we're family. Like, I seen them call each other cousin. I'm like, <laughs> so I immediately inboxed her. I was like, oh my God, we're family. That is so <laughs> funny. Of all the ways to figure out that you're family through Facebook, a right. post on Facebook, right? So we've got to figure that all out, Tanya. But yes, um, that's absolutely phenomenal that in the midst of nothing, the Lord was able to motivate you and anoint you to birth a book. How powerful is that? When everybody else was looking at a desolate place, you seen uh, a new birth. And that's absolutely powerful, which means that it can be actually done by any of us. Uh, right. Just because we've endured Corona, just because we've gone through Corona does not mean that you know, it's the end, the end all be all, right? We've right. still got to find our way and we've got to push. We've got to birth something. Um, so I'm excited that you were able to write the book. I'm super excited that we're able to uh, get a copy of the book. How, what's the name of the book? Share the book. Share a little bit about the book with us. It's called, can you see it? Yep, I can see it. It's called The Best Version of Me. And really what this book is about is, like I said, it's just my story. It's some of the things that I struggled with and had not been for that small group that I went through. You know, sometimes we can wear a mask and we can pretend very well. And I didn't know that I had issues rooted deep until I went wow. through this small group. And, you know, um, you know, you may find yourself acting out certain ways or you may have insecurities or 
you know, get mad over something and you really don't even know why. Well, it's something rooted deeper and there's a reason for it. So through that small group, that's how I found out like what some of my issues were. You know, some of them was um, just to be transparent. Um, I was molested as a child. I had been date raped. Oh, wow. um, I had an abortion, you know, so it was things like that. And, you know, again, church doesn't talk about those things. And yeah, I was serving in church. I was I felt like I was walking in my purpose, but I was still sitting on the front row by the pastor and his wife, still shameful, you know, of what if they find out my past, you know, and could not be wow. true who I was or who God was calling me to be. And, you know, honestly, if it hadn't been for COVID, I don't know if I would have told it. Because wow. I finally got to a place where I could slow down and I could hear God. And so it was one of those things where I was like, God, I know what you kind of want me to write about, but I've never written a book. I don't know what to do. I like, you're going to have to literally write the book. The whole Girl, period. you sound a little like Moses. I don't know how to go to Pharaoh. <laughs> I'm stuttering. I can't talk, Lord. What you want me to do? You know, that is awesome. He is my favorite and he that's my go-to. And, you know, even as in speaking and things like that, I don't like my voice because it's very... A southern drawl and it's very country and twangy and for so long i wouldn't speak because of it but i went moses is my favorite character because we relate so well it's funny that you said that and you know i know people are like oh you shouldn't get tattoos and things like that but i had this on my wrist that says i am so honey i got 14 of them girl i love them but i do too <laughs> but you know i did that as a reminder as no matter what god calls me to I can do it. All I had to do is look down at my wrist and remember I am told me and who told me to do it. I love it. I love it. That is so powerful. Thank you so much even for being transparent just now. I heard you talk about the abortion. I heard you talk about being gang raped. I heard you talk about being molested. Those are all powerful. And Tanya, you're so right. We have to, we've got to get to a place where we're transparent. Uh, especially in the church, because the church is meant to be the hospital. And so often we drop others because we don't open up and we don't share those stories. We don't go and carry those through to show them how we made it through that. If, if, the, if I've been through it and the Lord was able to do it for me, then surely he can do it for you. And right. sometimes they just need, you know, that's even what the Bible says. If your sister or brother has been overtaken by a fault, Yes, you which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Why? Because it could be you. Doggone it, it was you. You know what I'm saying? So you have to, you can't look down. And so often we look down on other people uh, because we see them in what was, but we never see them in the possibility right. of who they are or in their potential. And so we have a responsibility to help pull them through. Uh, right. My big sister, Pastor Lisa Mackey's on the line and and she's, she shares every morning and even when she talks that she's a midwife and, and the Lord um, mm. has placed on her heart to push people through the birth canal, to push them through no matter what, not leaving any man behind, but push them through, pull them on through. Right. And sometimes that's what we need, right? I'm having this baby. I can't get the baby out. I need a midwife. Help me to deliver this baby because otherwise I'm going to give up and guess what's going to happen? Purpose is going to die on the inside of me. And, you know, sometimes we just need someone to hold us accountable because the hardest thing is just find somebody to help us start. Yes. Let's give us that push that we need. Then, you know, we, we can walk out our purpose. That is absolutely phenomenal. I am excited about the book. I am definitely going to want you to put in the comments how uh, people can grab a copy of the book. Um, let's see there. There's some comments. They're laughing at they, They've laughed at us a couple times already. Um, <laughs> hello, BFF, my best friends on uh, I saw where Shaniqua says the word tells us to be still seven different times. Tanya, you made a great point about slowing down to hear God. Yes, she did. Shaniqua, thank you for reminding me of that. Um, sometimes the best thing comes out of us being still. Yes, mm. because we get so busy in life. And listen, in all the hats that you wear, you're a mom, you're a wife. Listen, being a wife is a job all by itself. <laughs> <laughs> but then be, you add being a mom to it and it's 10 times. And then you add your work. You still, you're still a full-time employee. So right. you've got responsibilities and obligations there, right? And you're self-employed, your ministry, 
you're in ministry, so you've got obligations there. And so we're always, always on the go. And you're right. COVID-19, the Lord provided uh, for, the, for the people. He provided for us a pause, a break. Well, we could just kind of be like, whew, I need sit it. down for a minute. You, me too. Catch our breath, right? And right. be able to hear from him. So that's, I, I love how Shaniqua even pointed that out, that, that you mentioned the opportunity to just be still. To be still, to be quiet, and to be able to hear. Because had you been moving, you wouldn't have heard anything. Right. And, you know, to be honest, I wouldn't be sad if everything stayed like this. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just, you know. <laughs> to be honest, I've kind of gotten into a new routine and, you know, it's kind of made my life a little bit easier just working from home. I'm able to balance and juggle things a little bit easier. You know, I can wash the clothes while I work or, you know, yeah. whatever I need to do. It's not like I'm stuck in traffic for 45 minutes to an hour. Then I have to stop by the store. Then I have to cook. Then I have to clean up, you know, you know, and then it's eight, nine o'clock. And, you know, my husband works, um, overnight so he has to be at work at midnight so he's usually in bed by five or six o'clock so i don't get off till five so i'm trying to rush home to get him something to eat so he can go to bed so it's kind of nice because i'm able to do all that with and, and just kind of just slow down mm -hmm. not you don't have the hustle and bustle and you're right. able to breathe wow so outside of the workbook is there anything else coming up for tanya is there anything else on the horizon um, well, the workbook that is new. So, um, in addition to the workbook, I will be creating a. Um, it will be a leader's handbook. So, what I'm going to do is this is one of many small groups that I'm going to put together curriculums for myself. So, I'm going to launch it. I'm going to host it. So, it may be over Facebook. Some may be in person for the people who are here. And then afterwards, I want to have a conference. So we may travel and do it and just have the conference in an area where, you know, most of the people can like meet up and have the conference. It's not going to be something that's drug out over the weekend. It's just going to be a one day thing, a couple hours and things like that. But this is going to be kind of the beginning of my deliverance ministry. So I'm going to help the people that have been in the same bondages as me come out. Awesome. Awesome. Pastor Lisa Mackey says, come on through, Tanya. <laughs> Awesome. All right, Tanya. Listen, we are at the end of our 21 days. And just as I've asked all of the other ladies, um, there are those that are listening tonight to us that will even listen to the replay. I love hearing you. Oh, she's Shaniqua says, I love hearing you cast your vision. <laughs> um, there are those that will listen to our replay tonight that need motivation to get up and get moving, that need to be inspired to know that although I've you know gone through some of life's adversities, uh, I can still make it, that the Lord can do it for me. They need to be motivated. Uh, I need a word from you, a word of impact that will push and cattle put someone into their next. What would your one word be tonight? It's never too late. No matter how old you are, no matter what you've been through, no matter if you're single, you're saved, you're not, whether you're married, God still has purpose for you. So I don't care if you're 80, it's never too late. I did not know what my it. purpose was until I was in my 30s. And I'm in my mid-40s now, and I'm just now walking it out. But it's never too late. Powerful. Absolutely powerful. I love it. Thank you so much. Pastor Cousin Soror <laughs> Tanya for coming on tonight and for sharing with us, for sharing with the women. I really, really, really appreciate you. Listen, you enjoy the rest of your night. Make sure you post in the comments okay. how we can grab a copy of the book, how they can find you. You are on Facebook. You all, she is Tanya Williams on Facebook, just as you see her name. Go ahead, follow her. Let's bombard her page. Let's go ahead and buy all the books that we can so that she'll have to get another print going. But I appreciate you tonight. Thank you so much, okay? Thank you so much for having me. It was a joy. Love you. Chat with you, you soon, more. okay? All right. Bye-bye. All, right. all right, you all. You all have heard tonight from my soul roar, uh, Pastor Tanya Williams. What a phenomenal story. It was shared with us on tonight. What a powerful word. And she really closed us out. I am super excited about everything that this month has held for us. Everything that we've talked about, everything that we've shared. 
it has been absolutely phenomenal. And, you know, I pray that this month has been a blessing to you and yours as well. If you did not catch all of the words, I am going to go over them with you now. 21 words. You should have a nice bank of words, a notebook, a journal, something, note cards, post-it notes, where you can post them wherever you need to post them. But these words are meant to encourage you. They're meant to motivate you. They're meant to empower you. They're meant to impact your life like never before. Let's go over those words so that if any of you miss them, you'll have them. Grace, we kicked off the month with grace. Conquer, resilience, pliable, and persevere. Those were our first five words. Grace, conquer, resilience, pliable, and persevere. Week two was followed up with tenacity, push, courageous, start. And I would say this other one, but I don't even want to say that one yet. We're going to save that. We'll save that one. (laughs) Then week three was caught with laugh, time, intentional, affirm, strategic. Laugh, time, intentional, affirm, and strategic. Week four, love, push, try, rise, fear, fight everything and rise. So fear was an acronym for fight everything and rise. We had endurance, and Pastor Lisa shared with us promulgate on Saturday as well. Our last word for tonight is that it's never too late. It's never, listen, that's like the icing on the cake, right? It's, can you post the 21 words in the comments? Thank you. (laughs) I'll make a post to shout with all 21 words. It is never too late to start. It's never too late. For all of these words, it's never too late for you to go ahead and pursue your passions, pursue your purpose, pursue your dreams. Listen, don't be a gold digger. Be a gold getter. It is my prayer, again, that the month of May has been a blessing to you. Please inbox me or share on my page what these 21 words have meant to you. And even in the days to come, how you see your life begin to unfold, how you see your dreams begin to change. Um, and actually come to life. Okay. I love you all. Remember to rock your crown ladies. They may slip. They may shift a little bit to the right or to the left, but you reposition those things and let's always reposition each other's crowns. Remember to rock your heels. Fellas for you, of course, that would be a pair of flats, but us girls, we rock a mean pair of stilettos. Secure the bag, secure the bag. And by all means, take off. By all means, take off. I absolutely love you all. Thank you for sharing the last 21 days with me and giving me your time. You all have an amazing night. I'm just trying to check to see any of the notes. Okay. You all have an amazing night as we prepare now to cross over out of the fifth month, the month of grace, over into the sixth month. I'll see you all in the, well, tomorrow morning. I don't know. I just cracked my own self up, but church folks, y'all should understand what I'm saying, but I'll see y'all tomorrow morning. Have a good night. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.